Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, hello out there, whatever time it is while you're watching this or whatever you're doing, thank you so much for tuning in to Hello Self Podcast. You're going to get a lot of insights and I'm sure inspiration to help you discover what are some of your Hello Self moments that maybe you missed in life or maybe that you're just seeing now or that through my guest thoughts and experiences and suggestions, you might even discover some new Hello Self moments in your life. I am so grateful that you're here and our goal at Hello Self Podcast is to help you get your goals off that someday shelf and turn your cans into cans. And I am your host, Patricia Leonard. I'm a coach and a speaker. And today, I am so excited to have my guest, Kathy Britt. Kathy, thank you for being here. Patricia, it is always a high honor, a privilege to be in your presence. Oh, my goodness. You are so great. See why I'm glad she invited me? She's going to make me feel great, and then she'll make you feel great. (laughs) Well, before we get started, and I really want... Kathy to give her give her life and career and um, disruptions and whatever came in her life that could bring insights and inspiration to you. I'm going to ask her to share. But first, I just like to take some highlights from her bio that I think will jumpstart your thinking about who this woman is. First of all, she's a licensed and ordained minister. She's got a bachelor degree in Christian education, master's in theology, and a doctorate in Christian education. And besides all of that that she does, she also helps her husband, Dr. Clanton Britt, with his ministry, Living Waters. She's, um, uh, She's a mom, too. If there are any moms out there, she's a mom and she's done all this and so can you. She's also a licensed realtor and she has two sons and a daughter. So she's been a mom. She's a businesswoman and five grandchildren and one great grandchild, grandson. So if you think oh, I'm too old to start my life, or I'm too old to do this, or I wouldn't know how. Let me tell you, you're going to get some inspiration today. So I'm going to turn it over to Kathy now to share her story and any Hello Self moments that really changed the trajectory of your life, your career, whatever you want to say, this will be great. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, hello, everyone. I am so thrilled to be here. First of all, I'd like to give um, proper props to Patricia Leonard, who is an amazing woman who I admire. It's so funny. She called me and she goes, I'm Patricia Leonard. I don't know if you remember me or not. And my retort was, who has ever met you, Patricia, who does not remember you? (laughs) You're so kind. She's amazing. So I'm so (laughs) glad to be here being interviewed by her today. So as she said, my name is Kathy Britt. Recently, I'm, I'm now Dr. Kathy Britt, just such a, such a high privilege. I tell you, I'm so excited about that. Um, I am an ex-military brat. My father was career military. He was in the Marines before I was born. And um, probably a couple of years into my life, he got out of the Marines and joined the Air Force. <laughs> so my childhood really provided me with the best education ever. We never lived anywhere longer than like three or four years. Mm -hmm. I lived in France before de Gaulle kicked the troops out. We then moved to England. I went first through fourth grade in England. We lived in a little uh, dreary village called Radwinter. And then we lived in Mildenhall Village. We had a British nanny. Um, Her name was Doris. She was a 
previous showgirl. She was an older yeah. chick, but she was in great shape. So she used to do all these little shows for us. And boy, we'd be sitting on the sofa cheering her on. <laughs> um, just great memories from childhood. And then we've lived everywhere in the continental United States. We lived in Cheyenne, Wyoming, Minot, North Dakota. Um, there's a big sign outside the base that says, why not, my not? It's like the coldest place on earth, I swear. We lived in um, Oscoda, Michigan, up uh, above Saginaw Bay City in Flint, but below uh, Mackinac Island. We lived in um, Illinois. I went to a school called Mascuda. Um, I graduated from high school in the Philippines. My senior prom was at the Philippine Plaza Hotel in Manila. Um, so, and then my father, when we left the Philippines, he moved to Florida. We all moved to Florida and he retired from what was Patrick Air Force Base on Cocoa Beach. It is now Patrick Space Force Base. Mm -hmm. So it's right there, right in the midst of the aerospace industry. So I said all that to say, I feel extremely privileged that I had such a well-rounded background. Mm -hmm. My father tells people, I have four siblings. And my father tells people, my girls have been around the world three or four times. <laughs> my girls do not meet strangers. There's only five girls, no boys. And um, so I, I have a series of hello self moments. Because we were forced to live in such diversity, whenever we lived in a foreign country, my father insisted that we live on the economy so that we would experience the culture of the people. He always employed us to embrace uh, diverse cultures. The world is full of people who are not like you, but they are, but they are like you, they're people. They're not like you, but they are like you. And you need to learn about their cultures because their culture is a very important part of this world. A great lesson for today too, Kathy. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, hello self, I love this concept because I believe we should always be listening to ourself. You know, I'm an ordained minister, so there's this little exercise that I do and I've taught my children to do it. And it's a mirroring exercise. And um, I look in the mirror every morning as usually as I'm brushing my teeth and I'll say, um, good morning world. You know, I am so grateful to be able to participate in this day. And then I listen for myself to answer me back. Love I listen, it, love I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I'm quiet and I just listen. And then the next thing I say is, what would you have me do today? And I stop and I listen. And then I say, and to whom would you have me do it? And I listen. And then I say, what would you have me say today? And to whom would you have me say it? And the last thing I say is, and, and I'm addressing this to God who is my higher power, um, Lord, I trust that today you will reveal to me everything I need to know, everything necessary for this day in the proper time space sequence. And that's it. Oh my gosh, how powerful. So I have to tell you, I have hello self moments daily because my inner self is, is I trust my inner self to guide me. You know, in Christian theology, uh, we, we call it the spirit of God that indwells us. Mm -hmm. And he guides. He really does. He'll guide. He'll say, do this, do that. Go here, go there. Talk to this person. Uh, don't, you know, don't, don't go in this direction. I mean, we've all experienced that. You know, you guys know you're listening. You, you've experienced that before. We all Kathy, experienced that. How, how, I, I want to stop you there because I love that. I love that. Some people say, I don't know if it's my hopes or if it's really my inner self, my higher power speaking. How do you, can you give them some tips on how to begin trusting, I guess? Yes, I can. Um, first of all, uh, listen, just really, and listen to hear. Don't, wow. don't listen to respond. There's a difference between listening to hear and listening to respond. Listen to hear. Um, my mother used to call it her first self. 
she's always say, and, and you guys all have experiences like this. My mother would always say, if I would have just listened to my first self, I would have done this. Or my first mind told me, you know, we've all got something like that, that we've either said or our parents said, but she would always say my first self or my first mind. My first mind told me to do this. If I would have just done that, trust it, trust it. Just, just, just trust it. I mean, it's hard to say there's no specific formula. You really have to just relinquish and trust. You have to relinquish and trust. So, um, you know, I've had, I've had, so, like I said, I have regularly hello self moments regularly because I listen, I listen. I, I, my husband laughs, I'll wake up in the morning and I'll be, you know, I talk to myself. I'll, you know, I'll be saying, you know, and, and when I say I talk to myself, it's the God in me, it's the spirit in me. You know, I, you know how you have, um, I'm a realtor, I'm a licensed realtor. And, um, you know, you see some of these teams of realtors and it'll be like the, I don't know, the Leonard group powered by Remax or whatever. So I am Kathy Britt powered by God. The, the power is the inner self, okay? So as I listen to my inner self, I dare to trust my inner self, which sometimes does not make sense. Sometimes does not make sense at all. For instance, when I met Patricia, we're fast forwarding way deep into my life now. But when I met Patricia, I was employed by St. Thomas Health Systems. And there was this massive layoff. They were laying off a lot of their business um, functions, the, the, the business positions. I was a purchasing agent. So they were outsourcing to um, a super center in Indianapolis. So they gave us like about a year's notice, said, we're gonna lay you off. And um, so you either have to look for another job within or you know prepare yourself or whatever. So they offered us retention pay. I think they gave us like five, $600 a month if we would stay to the end and help them with this outsourcing project. So what did I do? I prayed. So I said, okay, Lord, what do I do now? I mean, you know, I'm, how old was I then? That's 2012. I was 50 years old, just turned 50. I'm 62 now. So um, I was led to go to real estate school. It was like, I mean, and it was so all of a sudden I know to go to real estate school. And, you know, I tell people, God speaks to us intuitively intuitively you just know something that you did not know before you know and you know you didn't know it and you have to trust that knowing right you've got to just go with it you have to relinquish reasoning you can't try to reason because you'll reason yourself right out of it mm -hmm. so he says go to real estate school so I'm like okay well where I mean I started looking when I saw CLI continual learning institute I knew that was the one. I registered, I went to real estate school while I was still working there. I took the exam, um, I passed the exams and I did not get my license until the last day. This is a whole year later. That Well, the day after my last day, I went and got my real estate license. But when I met Patricia, it was like, when he told me to go to real estate school, it was like a hello self moment. I knew then that I was to shift out. I had been an entrepreneur before, but I knew then that I had stepped out of a lane of purpose that the Lord had for me. And as I said, when I say the Lord, I'm not trying to force this on anyone. This is just for me. So um, I knew that I was to go and I was to trust. Now I'm leaving the what some people would call security, I wouldn't call it security, but the security of, um, you know, a nine to five, mm -hmm. getting a paycheck, I'm 50 years old, I'm not a spring chicken, um, and get out here and, and compete in the real estate world. Well, this is the crazy thing. I graduated from high school in the Philippines. I got in a scholarship. We moved to Florida right after graduation. So like I said, we moved every, three, four years. So when we go there, I start college. The first two classes that I took in college, and I forgot all about this until I started going to real estate school in 2012, 2011. 
the first two classes I took in college in Florida were Florida real estate law and Florida real estate principles. And I never did anything with them. I, I didn't even know why I was taking them. I just took them. At that point, I was not really listening to my inner self, my, uh, you know, hello self. I mean, was trying to tell me what to do then. I truly believe I went all those years, almost 30 years. And then when it rolled back again, it was a definite hello self. It was like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. This is your lane. And so when we don't trust it sometimes, it may give us a second chance to come back. Are you listening now? Very good. And that was yeah. like 30 years later. I know. It's like, hello, you, you know, you've been here before. And I was like, oh my God, I had really, I had totally forgotten about it. And I did very well in the class in Florida, but I had no interest in real estate. So after that, I think I took uh, some classes on the Cold War or something. I'd be way <laughs> outside the scope of real estate. So, yeah. So, um, you know, that was a definite big hello self moment. Big, big. So I went to real estate school, got my license. Um, then I got my Florida license in 2016. I'm about to get my Kentucky license. I'm studying for that now. Wow. So um, the latest hello self moment that I've had, the most recent one, I was in Indiana. I had gone for some training. Uh, I'm the spiritual director for this organization called Kairos Outside. We um, nurture the families of, the, especially the female members of people who are incarcerated. What we discovered is that when people are incarcerated, so are their families. Mm -hmm. So I had gone to Indiana for some training. And um, while I was there, one of the ladies with the organization, she said, hey, she said, uh, there's this big conference that's coming to Nashville and I think you should go to it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's all I need is another conference to go to. And so she goes, no, seriously, I think you would really like this. So she told me about it. It was in Murfreesboro. And I didn't know one speaker who was going to be there, had never heard of one speaker that was going to be there. But I, I kept being led to go. It was two whole days. It was three whole days. It was three whole days. So it's hard for me to really chunk out three days of my schedule, but I did. And when I went, let me tell you, I, I heard speakers that I'd never heard of before, but oh my gosh, were they phenomenal. And there was this one speaker who did a piece on um, being emotionally healthy mm -hmm. as you disciple others. And so, I, I mean, it was such a hello self moment for me because I'm a leader and it was like, you really need to make sure that you are seriously healthy emotionally so that you can really be spiritually mature and you can you know, help to lead others. Mm -hmm. So that was a big hello self moment for me. I went for those three days, the best thing I could have ever done. It's the best thing I've done recently. You know, and Kathy, tools that, to work that, with. that brings up a really key point too, I think. Sometimes we go out there and we try to do the work when we haven't done the work on ourselves. So good, Patricia. Yeah, yeah. and I, I mean, that's what you're saying. And I think you are so right because I see that so often. That's the problem sometimes that leaders have. That's the problem that coaches have because they start using a process, but they didn't start with themselves. Exactly. And yeah, mm -hmm. very good point. I love what you said there. Yes. So good. So I'm embarking upon, as a matter of fact, tomorrow, we're starting a small group, uh, my husband, one other person who's involved with our ministry, and we're doing it. It's called um, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. We're starting it tomorrow. It's an eight-week process. We go from that into an eight-week uh, course that's called Emotionally Health, uh, Emotionally Healthy Relationships. Well, if people wanted to sign up for that, you don't have to do it right now, but at the end, I don't want to forget. Or do you, are you just taking anybody that's interested or how? Oh, definitely. It's something that I plan to do in the future. I think it's going to be, it was like a hello self moment. Yeah. I believe that's going to be one of the building blocks for uh, my newest venture that I'm embarking upon. And it is really as a, um, 
a destiny coach, I'm calling mm-hmm. myself. Yes, I wanted to know more about that. I love that title. Yeah, well, I didn't know about it at first because I said at first, um, a destiny guide, a destiny guide almost sounds, or a destiny escort, it almost sounds like a prostitute. I, said, <laughs> I don't want somebody to think, you know. And, <laughs> So I talked to a dear friend of mine, Dr. Michael Bradley, and he was like, no, no, no. I think that sounds really good because that is really what you're doing. You know, you're helping people, providing them with a space where they can hear themselves and also teaching them how to listen to their first self or their first mind or the God within them, whatever they want to call it, but sort of helping them, you know, charting them through that course. Yes. So they can get to their designated purpose in life. Because I think that is a key. A lot of times people have an insight of something they want to do or they get a nudge, but they don't know how to get started. Because that's one of the questions I was going to ask you is, what are some tips to those who may be at the corner of there is still more I want to do and at the on the avenue of how do I get there to start on at that avenue. So this is exactly what you're doing now is helping them emotionally and then escorting them along the way. Oh my gosh. Right. Because if they're not emotionally healthy, there's no way they can get there. No. Can't get there. That's, that is the problem with leadership. That definitely is the problem with leadership in businesses and ministries Mm -hmm. in in organizations we nonprofits we see it all the time you have leaders who are just not emotionally sound you know we have a tendency to compartmentalize our life you know we um you know we're spiritual on sundays Mm -hmm. the rest of the week we're carnal for me there's Mm -hmm. no division i mean it's just who i am it's just and so that's what i try to teach people how to sort of you know, integrate their whole self. I mean, you know, and, and give esteem to your emotions. I always say your emotions are the passenger. They're not licensed to drive. Your body is the vehicle. Your spirit, uh, is the driver, your will, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. They're the driver. Very, I mean, they're, they're the passenger key component. They can be in the vehicle, but if you give that arena permission to drive, it will be like leaving Nashville, thinking you're headed to Louisville, but you're on 65 South. You're headed to Huntsville, Mm -hmm. but not knowing it, expecting to arrive in Louisville. You know, I think that's right. We get caught up in destinations. We get caught up in titles. We get caught up in shoulds. We get caught up in, well, it's too late. And so we get caught up in that and we're not aware or we're not present if it, if you, yeah. Yes, that's good. So, oh my gosh, such great ideas. Yes. That's great. Yeah. I like the destination. (laughs) I advise people to start writing, start writing journal, just start to jot down what you hear. I, I mentor several young girls and I just started with a girl last week. She started a notary business. So proud of her. I used to actually work with her at St. Thomas and um, she was a temp there and she called me. I hadn't talked to her in like 12 years and we we're friends on Facebook and she said, I've been wanting to call you for a whole year. That's a nudge. That's yeah. a nudge. Yes, it is. That's what I told her. Exactly. That's a hello self moment, isn't it? She said, I've been wanting to call you for a whole year, but I said, oh, she's busy. She's got kids. She's doing this. She's doing that. And so I said, girl, you know, I'm approachable. And she said, I know. She said, my friend said, just call her. So she invited me to her uh, ribbon cutting ceremony. And I couldn't go because I was taking a class that day, but so proud of her. She's doing a, a, a notary business and oh gosh, just so excited for her. So I said, well, I'll take you to lunch. Let me take you to lunch on Friday. So we went to lunch and she said, I wanted to ask you if you would mentor me. She said, I've been wanting to ask you. She said, I just think that you could help me, you know, kind of figure out where I'm going. So we we talked our way through about three or four things just at lunch that day. And so we're going to meet now every other week. So I love mentoring young women because I'm seasoned. I'm 62. I, I, I find that in this season of my life, I am wanting to just share so much with women, especially women, but men too. I have a couple of men that I mentor, Yes. but 
just letting them know you were saying, where do you start? It's never too late. It's never too late. I always say, I'm going to be learning until I check out. Yes, me too. I'm going <laughs> to be learning. I get so excited. Like this class we're starting tomorrow. Yeah. I can't tell you how excited I was when UPS delivered the box of materials. I mean, I just get so excited about the prospect of learning something new. So never, ever stop. And as women, yes, we have our children. Yes, we have our grandchildren. I have a great grandson now. I kept him all day on Wednesday and I enjoyed every single moment of it. But we are still entitled to live lives. There's a- You know, Kathy, oh my gosh. I think that we get this thought that surviving is living and you're oh. just saying that it's totally two different things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. We love to travel. My husband and I, we travel extensively. We, we go a lot. We go a lot. I'm, you know, I'm ready to stretch it out now. It looks like, I don't know, COVID will probably be with us for a minute, but you know, you get, if you're going to get injections, go ahead and get vaccinated. If not trust, trust that, you know, you're going to check out when it's your time to go. Yes. I'm ready to go to Europe. I want to go to Nice next year. Oh, so. Um, and I'm going to go next year. Yes. I mean, it's just, you have to plan. So I said, right, start to write mm -hmm. and then execute. And you know what? Another thing is you said, I'm going. We yes. have to declare it. And then I remember one time a woman called me and she said she she was a, a pharmacist. And she said right here in Tennessee, she said, my husband and I want to, and they were in their 50s or 60s. We want to go to a certain international company, uh, country. It was France. But anyway, she said, we want to go, but our family keeps draining us. And I said, your family? <laughs> yeah, because they need help here and need help there. And I said, you're standing on the corner of I'm going to and I'm not going to. So you've got to declare and go straight ahead. And I said, when are you going? So I just made her put a stake down. When are you going? So yes. she said, OK, May and the year. And I said, now, where are you going? She said it. Now, guess what? This was in October. And in May, I got a call from her. She said, guess where my husband and I are going this month? I'm not kidding you. And I remember I wanted, I wanted to go to uh, Italy. And uh, it, this is funny. A person in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, put a note on LinkedIn. No, it's on Facebook. I'm sorry. And he said, I've got a timeshare, international timeshare. Wow. So I knew him. And I called him and said, uh, what do I have to do to, to take advantage of this? He said, you just have to pay my fee, $600. And he, listen, what he, he helped me plan the entire trip, too, because he had traveled internationally a lot. He helped me travel. But that's not even the end of the story. I got a senior discount for my flight. And when I was um, when I landed at the airport, the lady there, I asked for her advice. I didn't speak another language, but she we got through it and she got me on the wrong bus. So on the bus, I heard this uh, young man and an older man talking. Well, the older man was speaking Italian and the younger man was speaking English. And I turned around and I said, oh, my goodness, you you speak English. And he said, yes. And I said, OK, I'm going to tell you something. When I walked on this bus now, mind you, this is a kid my son's age. And I said, when I walked on this bus, I looked back there and I said, oh, my God, is that Italian young man? Are you good looking? I didn't say it then. But then later when I sat down and I heard that he was speaking, I said, you are drop dead gorgeous. Don't take it the wrong way now because I'm just here on a. Guess what happened from that? He what? said, well, where are you going? And I told him the resort area. His father got up during the time that we were traveling on this bus and the bus had stopped and he walked up to the bus driver and said something. And I saw him pull out some money. But I didn't know what was going on. And so when 
we uh, can't let everybody off the bus, the bus driver, I said, well, where am I going? The bus driver said, well, you're on the wrong bus. But that gentleman paid for me to drive you to the right place. That oh, is, goodness. you just got to step out there. And I went by myself for 10 days. Yeah, I met some fabulous. women. You know what? You, you're so right. Trust and then just act. Yeah, you have to move. You have to move. Um, you really have to move. You have, there has to be some motion. Yes. Um, you know, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So you can't just, you know, always want to do these things or, you know, I can't tell you the number of people that I meet who want to start this business or mm -hmm. want to get this kind of licensure or, mm -hmm. you know, they want to do that. Just do it. Nike has the best slogan ever. Just do it. I know what I love. Just do it. It's really that simple. I yes. mean, if you've been given a nudge, as Patricia says, if you have these hello self moments that are saying, you know, hello, come on, I'm here. Hello, I'm here. You've got to move on those things. You've got to move on those things. You cannot afford to just sit dormant and allow your life to just waste away. So many people do, though. It's that's, so sad. that's right. They just survive and not thrive. And, you know, if they're just like Kathy is saying, if there's something you want to do, there's someone who has done something like that or similar. Go talk to them. Go talk to Kathy like her, their friend. Uh, would you be my mentor? Would you help? All you got to do is ask. And then another good point. Patricia just pointed out something very, very key. When you follow your first self, it's amazing. The people are already positioned. They, you don't know this. The people are already in place who are going to help you get where you need to go. That's a perfect illustration about this gentleman who paid the bus driver, didn't even speak the same language as you, paid the bus driver to take you where you needed to go. You're on the wrong bus. Yes, that's You're what... going in the wrong direction. <laughs> and here it is. People are in position to get you, to redirect and get you to the right place. That's how it is with life. Yes. So you can't be afraid. You, you have to do it scared. If you are afraid, you have to do it afraid. Yes. Um, you know, it's so, it's so very, very important. I work with a lot of girls who are incarcerated. I'm a volunteer chaplain at the Tennessee prison for, well, it was the Tennessee prison for women. It's now the Deborah K. Johnson Rehabilitation Center. Some of these girls have done long sentences. I have several girls who are out now. One just did a 20 year life uh, sentence, 20 years. She went when she was about 18, she got out. She is now uh, the director of a nonprofit organization, <laughs> makes six figures, Bravo! About three years, makes six figures, manages about a $2 million budget, annual budget, just closed on a house that she had built, $400,000 house she had built. I was her agent. I tell these girls when they get out, listen, focus on who's saying yes. Do not concentrate on who's saying no. There's always gonna be people who are saying no. Thank them and move on. It makes you, you know, it's like sandpaper. It's just, just sand, you know, finishing you up, giving you the, the right finish. But you have got to focus on who's saying yes. And you've got to believe in yourself. You got to bet on yourself. So the recidivism rate with the girls that I mentor, and I'm not bragging on myself, I'm bragging on them. The recidivism rate is zero. They don't go back to prison. They come out and they do well. They are starting businesses. I have several who have started their own businesses. I have uh, one girl did 33 years. She didn't think she was ever going to get out. She started taking care of a woman who had supported her for the 30 some odd years she was in prison. Most of her family died. She's from another state. So this woman had fallen ill. Her and her husband moved from Texas to Tennessee, got a, um, a mobile home. And uh, my friend, she moved in with them and took has taken care of them. The husband has since passed away. The wife's not in the best of health. But she's she's supporting them, taking care of them, and they pay her. I you mean, know, Kat, always a way. Yes. You know, Kathy, 
some people are in physical prison, like you're talking about oh, these young ladies. However, some have created their own prison. Maya Angelou talks about that in The Caged Bird Sings. Doesn't yes. even know that all it has to do is leave that cage and do everything it wants. So I think um, all of any of you out there who are thinking there's not an opportunity or it's too late or you don't have the money or anything that, or you can't hear the voice in your own head or you can't hear the voice in your heart. Talk to somebody like Kathy who understands that what listening really is because I think these are the tips and the inspiration that we need to live the life that we were meant to live. So pay attention to this. And she's given you so many tips. And I hope you remember these things and do like she says, take that first step. Oh my gosh, that is so fabulous, Kathy. Wow. Yeah, it's just such a privilege and such an honor to be a part of their lives. You know, I just really, I count it just, uh, you know, it's such, like I said, such a privilege and such an honor. I'm just so so grateful to um, be trusted, to be a trusted resource mm -hmm. in their life. I mean, they're fragile, but they come out and do so well. One girl's working at Vanderbilt University. She came out with three felonies, but she didn't give up. She explained to them, she, and I tell them, don't lie. Mm -hmm. Tell them where you've been and, you know, bet on yourself, sell yourself, bet on yourself. She's doing well. Another girl graduated from David Lipscomb in, um, December with her master's degree. Oh, fantastic. She's a director now at the Nashville Rescue Mission. I mean, they're doing well. You know, the world, we're in a time right now. And I think I, I didn't like COVID. None of us did. However, COVID caused us to stop and think about our own self and maybe even the God spirit in us. Yes. Uh, to listen and to say, what is this about in my life? What is it about? We may have lost family members, and I'm really sad about that. And we may have lost jobs and money, and I'm sad about that. But what I'm really grateful about is there are people like Kathy out here still helping, and you too, whoever you are, you have a mission to do to help others. And I think that um, even out of disruptions, Kathy, some greatness can come if we look at it. You know, I met a man that is a Christian singer, songwriter. <clears throat> he, I'm on the board of women in film and television, and he was at one of our events. And um, he was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer, throat and he and his wife said, why God, why? And then he said, somebody um, gave him the lyrics to a song and he said, I was so depressed. I, no, 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 I don't want that. And he said, but I thought about it a little while or I went into uh, meditation or whatever he did in his life. And he said, all of a sudden I said, I started being grateful. Thank you God for whatever you have planned next for me. And I'm going to sing this song. And he did. And guess what? He is totally cancer free now. Totally. Yes. And he was telling his story right here in Nashville, Tennessee. He moved. So, didn't he? Mm -hmm. he moved. He action. He took action. Yes, that's exactly right. And the thing was to be grateful for what he had been given and asking, like you have been suggesting, what is the purpose? of this throat cancer in my life? And is it a message for others and how can I use it? The same things you said when you stand in front of the mirror, yes. he was doing. And I mean, it's just, um, uh, yeah, it's just amazing uh, the things that we can do. Now there's some things we think we can control and we don't, but I think if Kathy keeps saying, if we surrender, if we listen surrender. and surrender. And like you said, the, with this gentleman, gratitude is at the top of my list. Mm -hmm. Always just maintain an attitude of gratitude. Yes. And Patricia, I'm grateful for today. Oh, I am. 
This mm -hmm. has been exactly what I was hoping we could deliver to our audience. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. And so now in closing, um, could you give them a little bit of information if they want to reach you or whatever you want to share as you yes. as we close out this? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm working on a new web presence. I have web presences for real estate and everything, but um, you can reach me on Facebook. I'm Kathy Davidson Britt, hyphenated. Um, Davidson, D-A-V-I-D-S-O-N. My email address is kbritt, B-R-I-T-T, 615 at gmail.com. Um, I'll give you my phone number as well. You feel free to call me, 615-500-7067. And I would love, 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 love to connect with you. I have such a genuine interest in people. I'd love to hear your story. And trust me, ladies, trust me. Just like Patricia says, every day is a new day. Every day is a brand new opportunity. You know, why don't you say hello self? Don't wait for a self to say hello to you. You say hello self. Introduce yourself to yourself. Oh, wow. Wake up, wake up. So powerful. Oh my gosh, so very, very powerful. I am... You have given so many tips and suggestions and inspiration to the audience today. And you know, I always say that in every one story, there are parts of their story that is part of our story. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure today that you have touched the lives of many people just by saying, oh my gosh, I felt like that before. Um, I didn't, she didn't have all the, everything, but she just stepped in. Yes. So those are the kind of things that I want our audience. And I hope speaking to my audience now, thank you again for uh, tuning in to this episode with Kathy Davidson Britt. And I'm sure you're walking away with a lot of energy, a lot of motivation. Take the next step. Just remember life is a gift. The way you wrap it is your choice. And I am Patricia Leonard, your host for the Hello Self podcast. And one last thing I want to say to you, keep dreaming and making those dreams come true. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.